guess genetically in a way or another from our birth and one that has been planted upon us. That, I don't know if that makes any sense. Can you say that again, um, Facts? I didn't quite catch the first part. Just say it again, mate, and I'll, I'll, I'll answer. What I was thinking, you know, uh, for us to have this mindset that, that we're growing up with, that we're working with as a light worker or whatever, uh, now we we have what the uh, mindset that they've worked us into, and then we have a, a a genetic mindset that we're going back to. Dual polarization, I guess. Uh, yeah. So we have an original mind. Our original mind. Our original template, our original, what we call Christed identity, which is our potential that we would normally uh, work with to evolve our self identity and reality through experiential life. That is what we were on, like an organic evolution of consciousness. It was working on an original template of self identity. And we would create a self-identity through experience as we went through the time cycles which are given in various densities of, you might say, density one is where we're located at the moment. And we'd have a certain amount of time to lay down the DNA strands, activate the chakra systems, make a quantum leap up into the next four, five, and six. So we go from dimensions one, two, three, chakras one, two, three, DNA strands one, two, three. And at about the age of eight, around about that time, we would normally make a quantum leap and start generating chakras uh, four, five, six, dimensions four, five, six, DNA strand four, five, six. And we start progressing in consciousness, laying down through experience within time cycles an accretion of a living memory matrix which was reporting back to source so that source would have a record of us we have a record of our self-identity and we would progress in an evolution of consciousness in organic systems but with the intruder race lines that came in remember that they created a separation from source in their mind or you know in, in their experience their body started to be encoded with what we call dead light construct. Uh, they were creating records in time, not living memory. They were creating recordings in time, not being able to, those records weren't able to flow back to source to be validated in an archive that source could say, verify and, and say, yes, uh, you as my offspring uh, are experiencing these things. I'm duplicating your records. You have a record within yourself or a, a memory of, of yourself. Source could no longer uh, receive the communication of those race lines of separation. And so those race lines, instead of having a living memory matrix since that time of separation, they would have records of isolation. They would have records that were overlaying their own original living memory prior to that date. So they were building within their genetics archives of records of separation which then created their own DNA because DNA is the archiving of your experiences. So in the archiving of their experiences they would have had living memory matrix overlaid with records of separation. And that's archived in the genetic structure. So when those intruder race lines came into our matrix and started mating with the women of our Regenesis program here, we were regenerating this earth up into higher organic structure. When the invaders came in, they were sharing their distortions, their DNA 
which held some living memory and some records of separation. So the hybrid codes that we as the people on the earth were receiving were now containing dark light constructs of non-communication with God's source or source of life if you like to call it that way. So there was dark imagery, there was not communication, there was a false realization, there was a memory or a record of separation which we inherited through our genetics. And so as we people on the earth began to receive these intruder race line codes, we were becoming coded by them and the genetics of our structure were perpetuated down through the lineages. And so everyone on the earth inevitably became coded with intruder race line uh, coding. So we have some living light structure and we have some dead light structure. And, and even if you go to the Bible, you know, it says in there, um, if your eye be single, your whole body will be filled with light. So in other words, if you have the singularity of the communication with God's source, with your own self-identity, you will have a full expression of being the offspring of the living one. But if your if you light be darkness, that's what it says uh, in John 3, I think it is. It says, but if your light be darkness, how deep is that darkness? So if, if you look into the archives of the anatomy of the genome of the human hybridization program, you'll find that there's living light there. And according to the cross hatching and the many members coming into uh, the, the lines of expression of, the, of your ancestors, so you might have some very, very strong lines of ancestral that go right back and they have very, very good strong light communication with source. Other people might have more uh, hybridization codes of alien intrusion set within their genetics, in their body imprint. And so they would be holding a lot of dark light. So if your eye be single, your whole body will be light and you'll be the, the original offspring of the living source and you wouldn't have any infection within you. But if your eye... If your light be darkness, you could have many myriad cross hatchings and interweavings of a matrix going right back through eons of time that are causing your body imprint to carry a lot of genetic coding that's not, you know, particularly healthy to your um, evolution of consciousness. So you'd have a greater job to convert that darkness into light, you know, through that Christ light that is your natural inheritance. So what we say is that Christed light. That Christ in you, or the Christ, as we learn through Kafara, that Christ in you is able to transmute because that original imprint held in the mind of Source can flow down to you and uh, bring you back onto an evolutional path of your previous uh, level of consciousness ascension. And so you can actually allow the living light structure of the Christ to come in and override the corruptions of the ancestral lineage that your body is currently holding as distortion fields which are completely correlating to the black hole matrix and dragging your body down to death. So the reason the body goes to death is because it's attuned to the uh, black hole alignment. Uh, parts of your codes are dragging you down and yet parts of your codes are lifting you up and you want to evolve. So there becomes a war of attrition within you uh, whereby it is a decision of your own reality to say you either want to go into black hole fall and work the agendas of the intruders because they are your parents after all and they are the ones commanding you. It's what the Bible calls carnal commands or commands of the flesh, commands of the decaying system, the dissipation. Or you can work the agenda or the, the life instruction or, or the commands of the living light, you know, God's source. So you, you can say to yourself, you know, my decision would be, uh, I want to regenerate. Or my decision would be, I want to gain the riches of this world through manipulation, control and war and oppression. I want to be one who destroys. So many people in the world are, you know, destroyers. Many people in the world, like the, govern, the governing powers, uh, the bankers and uh, media and all that sort of people who are attuned to that, they have a predisposition to that. They are more easily persuaded to come into that agenda of darkness and corruption and control and extortion and extraction and operate as agents of the black hole. They're more likely to do that. But some people who have a, a spirit of life, some people who can feel the power within them of the ascension, are willing to let those codes go 
They don't want to gain the world and lose their soul. They would rather gain eternal life and become givers of rivers of life to help those others who are caught in the darkness. So some people in the world, some small quotient, some small proportion, would be the forerunners of the ascension and uh, bringers, bringers of the codes of life and uh, healers and restorers of the breach. Many, many people here in the world would be ones who would forsake the treasures and riches of this world and would find the richness of the glory of the grace of the hidden treasure that's in the midst of them that is their original anatomy, structure, life-giving signature, uh, the true sacred sequence of eternal life. And they would treasure that, which I, I am one. I love that. I love the richness of the treasure of the grace of my originality. And uh, through that um, attunement, I'm able to transmute the codes of darkness that would drag me down. And through that process of transmuting those codes within me that drag down to death, I'm able to assimilate to myself and bring out the healing codes. So whatever was my affliction through the transmutation and the transfiguration of that particular aspect, I'm able to put the antidote of that affliction into the shields and fields of this earth hologram and I'm able to transmit the healing frequencies to those who are also similarly uh, affected by that you know iniquity. So you know those people who bring into themselves the regenesis are able to heal themselves and as they heal they can transmit those healing codes or antidotes into the shield of the earth, into the shield of the galaxy, into the many galaxies, into the universe and wherever there's a devastation they can pour forth their healing uh, solutions of their own attainment of overcoming those things within themselves. And so that's the beauty of it. Uh, we come into that process now of healing ourselves through the grace that is given us through the Guardian Alliance, Interdimensional Association of Free Worlds, all living matrices of perpetual motion life and Christic realities of the higher structure right up and up and up and up and up so that we can actually call upon our own stations of consciousness of original creation ability to come down and join us here and lift us up and share the life that is in this beautiful situation that we're in. We're able to heal the nations. So many of us will be calling for that spark of life, that living Christ, that Christ within to return. That's the return of Christ in the Bible, you know. Everyone's waiting for the return of Christ. Well, the return of Christ is when you wake up and realize that you are that and uh, you decide to do something about the distortions that you're also carrying. And uh, as you do decide to let Christ return as you, as you, well, uh, you're going to flow the healing codes into all life everywhere. It's good, you know. And I love it. So uh, there you go, uh, facts. And I really appreciate your questions there because what I've realized is when someone asks a question and they're listening or I'm able to pour my living water into their vessel, there's a washing of the water. I bring out something within me that I never really knew before. And when I speak it, it becomes real to me. And when you hear it, it'll resonate with you. Or maybe there's some conflict. Maybe you don't hold everything I say, but at least there's something happening there uh, because my intention is the restoration of life. And uh, so it is. And so, anyway, hand over the mic there. Uh, thank you very, very much for asking those questions, Facts. Have you got any other ones there that you'd like to bring out? Or maybe someone else in the room has got a question or something? Because I am recording this for Paltalk, uh, for YouTube, on Paltalk. Uh, I'm going to also put this up as um, Caught at the Crossroads. So... I've got four uh, YouTubes up there currently now. I've just finished loading the last one up. It's called Grant Barlow, Caught at the Crossroads, uh, Metaphysics or something or other. One, one of four, two of four, whatever, right up. And so this will be a continuing series as long as our opportunity lasts here in the room and as long as someone asks a question. So anyway, hand over the mic. Come on up there, facts. Well, I was just wondering, you know, there's a lot of people in this room that feel the same way, that, that we're right about uh, being, questioning what is all there and trying to find our true selves. It, I guess it gets back to like a beaver on one side of the planet and make a dam like the other side. So we all kind of stuck together in the same 
I don't know, we got some kind of genetic engineering that uh, makes us think that we're right. We all feel that, that we're right in the way that we're thinking, even though we've been taught different. Uh, that's a good question too, because uh, everyone does feel that they're right. A and why would this be so? Now, obviously there are certain laws of creation that work. There are certain laws that have been imposed upon us that cause us to lose our alignment with that creative ability. So, let's just say, during the times of invasion, which, you know, had been going on for a long time in the planet and Milky Way galaxy, Say, for example, this Earth was in a state of regenesis and the Guardian Alliance and the Interdimensional Association of Free Worlds was visiting the planet, helping the inhabitants of the planet, you know, which we were at that time. Uh, we came into the planet to help ascend the planet into organic structure. We came down with contracts to support the regenesis of the Earth. And during that time, the Guardian Alliance and the teachers who came to the planet to help us understand higher technology, higher truth, higher life practices, they were teaching us. And we were listening to the advice, to the counsel of these instructors who were helping us evolve the planet. So whatever they told us, we believed it. We took it on board, we practiced it, we entrained it into the bodies, into our emotional fields, into our mind, consciousness, into communities, and we were sharing that knowledge, and of course that knowledge is true. We think it's right. And it, it was right according to what was taught, even though there's higher knowledge that we can still be taught. But when the intruder race lines came, and there was an invasion, and uh, the authority of our original teachers was usurped, we still had an allegiance to those who were pretending to be our teachers, and we were taking on the teachings which were now slightly different. We were starting to spin our energy fields in a different direction. We were starting to speak slightly different language, and language programs your DNA sound tones, light, instruction, movement, many, many sense, senses program our self-identity. And of course, as we have been taught, we believe that to be right. So no matter who the teachers were, we had an allegiance and, 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 and a contract to listen to the teachers, even though the usurpers had come in. We always think we're right because if we had lost one piece of information that we thought was right before and that one piece of information was now substituted by a different piece of information we would no longer remember the first piece of information but we would remember the second piece in other words if we retrained ourselves to say I want to forget the first and now re receive the second the second is right so we were trained constantly to receive information from our instructors and Part of the instruction was to align with our true selves and eventually to hear uh, our higher multidimensional structure, uh, those stations of consciousness which would be our higher original thought systems, we would allow those parts of ourselves to come down and inform us of our truth. But in that process of learning how to do that, we were listening to uh, instructors that were teaching us through the vibration of word, through written text, through training, through movements, and through doing various uh, skills and learning different uh, technologies and different kinds of mastery here. So everyone on the planet, they have a whole mind that's always working, but the information in the mind uh, may not be true according to our original teaching or our original self-identity but we still think it's right everyone here on the planet you know you, you take the people in power who are running the one world government say for example the the elite who run the banking system of the international monetary fund they are using 
kind of teachings that they've learned and they have, uh, you might say, an infusion of the alien intruders' uh, energy flows, the energy flow of the alien intruders that plug in to their auric field that direct their conscious thinking are causing the people, the bankers, to act as if they are right because that's their flow of information. They are not connected to our flow of information, they're connected to the alien intruder agenda flow of information and whatever they hear and perceive according to those plugins of energy is causing them to think that they're right. And that's what they're doing, they're acting on the information. So it comes down to the source of information. If we are the oppressed and we feel the crushing, we feel the shutdowns, we feel the suffering, uh, we realize that the information they are receiving is not beneficial to us and we've been programmed to receive their version of the controls that they oppress us with. So to tap back into your own source and hear what we call Keylontic data streaming of our original consciousness flows, we can receive our original flow of information and knowledge and rightness and uh, we can override and overwrite the corruption that we're being oppressed by. So we're not going to buy into it any longer. Come on up there, facts. Did that make any sense to you at all? Come up, mate. Yes, it did. Uh, you think that any of their transmissions or their power or anything comes from the obulists and the way that they make the buildings that they're in to draw down the power? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, the obelisks, the um, pyramids, the symbols, the layouts of some of the street designs, the hidden configurations. Actually, you can see them if you look for them. They're all symbol codes that symbolize uh, geometric shapes of mathematical encryptions that cause energies to come in to the planet. And these energies are coming from, excuse me, I'm, I'm eating something. These energies are coming from similar configurations that might be star pattern configurations. So as they would put down a certain configuration or symbol code or, you know, a sign of something, it's actually attracting the energy of that. And, and that's how the occult works. If, if, if you draw a picture of something, that symbolizes a certain energy, you're going to attract that energy to that symbol and because you put that symbol there, you're going to attract it to yourself and you're going to be able to manipulate that energy and use that energy to control the people wherever that symbol code is approximate. And uh, it's the same with any kind of spiritual teaching. It's, it's geomancies. It's, uh, it's kind of like structure, geometric patterns. If you're using systems of mathematical form, you're going to attract certain constellations of energy that come down that are attracted to that pattern. And that's just a simple basic thing of the occult. And that's why all of the leaders of the world have occult practitioners that guide them and show them. And right through you know, the last 500 years or something or other, uh, many of the people who have been dominating the world scene have been using black magic, occult, symbolism, they've been using patterns, they've been using uh, all of these things to bring power to themselves. And of course, this is only black hole invader race line power. Because they found the use of those symbols through their inherent memory, through the hybridization and ancient civilizations that also were incorporating those kind of energies into their structures of community. You know, history kind of repeats itself in some ways because people who found domination over others were using these kind of symbols. Pyramids, ley lines, energy grids, structures of the earth. Uh, many, many things would attract those kind of energies because they were already implanted here. Implanted in the grids of the earth and also implanted in the minds of men. And people are just bringing them back to mind and using them and experimenting with them and finding occult power 
and oppression of the people. So this is all energy that's stolen from uh, a black hole matrix. And the whole black hole matrix has stolen energy from living systems. So what it is doing is it's perpetuating the agenda of the black hole matrix further and further as people would continue to use these symbolisms and these energies and attraction and manipulation of it. And of course it's only a um, self-defeating system that's consuming itself, it's imploding, it's collapsing, has a finite amount of time and amount of energy. Uh, we can actually stop the intrusion, we can stop the invasion by no longer participating with their program by actually visualizing again perpetual motion uh, structure like for example in the teachings that we are uh, following when I say we I mean we've got a small group here in Melbourne Australia uh, the few of us are teaching and learning the Kathara light sound one you know Kelontic science the freedom teachings we're learning that there are true symbol codes there are true mathematical encryptions there are true geomancies there are true patterns and configurations that would activate constellations of higher dimensional thought that would bring a divine order, a true order, a, a healing structure to come into the planet. So many people are realizing that just as the occult and the black magic and all of that voodoo that they use to manipulate and control and bring death to the planet, just as they're using symbolisms, so can we regenerate our communication with divine nature through using uh, symbol codes sound tones, true language. See, one, one of the first things that the, uh, the One World Order has done is, is broken down language and broken it down so that your mind makes continual circuits and loops around with never, never finding a solution within your own computation. You, that, they've used uh, the, the construct of sentences, uh, the, the use of double letters, the uh, negation of words, and they've used a lot, a lot of different kind of controls in language, and even language itself, Say, for example, the language I'm using now, the English language, 26 symbol codes or energetic signatures of energy that would be um, relative to certain flows from constellations of mind back down into me. So as I would say the letter A, it would activate certain sound tones. It would have a certain pictorial A and it would bring into my mind from a certain constellation that energy. And as I thought it or spoke it, it would create it. And so, as I would use it, an alphabet of 26 uh, letters, I would create a world, uh, according to the structure of sentence, I would create a world for myself through thinking and speaking that would be very limited. If I was to use the original uh, encryption language and the symbol codes and tonal signatures of the original creation language that created the DNA of the angelic humans and indigos in higher structure, if I was to use that language, I would open up to constellations of thought and energy flows and, and mathematical computations and permutations of a much greater expression of creation. I, I would be able to create, create much more beautifully. If, if I was uh, able to bring the 144 elements, see at the moment the elemental chart on science here is around 104, 108 depending on different uh, workings, but there are 144 elements and they are caused through 144 elements of speech or thought. So the computation of the elements of thought and speech and creation of vibrational frequencies through the oscillation of sound tones and standing scalar waves that we would create as offspring of God's source, we could create wonderful, beautiful structures and communities through having true language. Well, that's not the case today. Uh, we have a much shut down language and a much manipulated controlled world through symbol codes and uh, occult practices that actually control us and shut us down and manipulate us and bring death. We can regenerate structure here through learning again the true flow of perpetual motion life that is our given reality. It's our originality. That's what source of life created us to be so that we could walk and work with those energetic structures, radiation signatures, templates, blueprint of life to create experiential archiving of the knowledge that we would gain through time cycles. But uh, we can't do that now. We're under the oppression of language, under the oppression of symbolism, under the oppression of invader race lines, under the oppression of a lot of things. So uh, here we are, you know. It's, uh, it's the life that we're stuck within. 
but the potential is still within us to break free and the information and knowledge is right here with us in this current stellar activation cycle 2017 is the peak of this hand over the mic there uh, facts come on up well you kind of got it there I don't know you said 2017 uh... I mean, their energy has to run out eventually if everybody wakes up, is what I'm getting at. You think it's going to be all the way to 2017? Because I don't think I'll live that long to see it, but maybe. Well, that, that's the sort of talk that uh, I've heard in, in our group. You know, it says, um, in about the year 2000, uh, Cosmic alignments started to really enter into this Earth space time, and a lot of changes are actually observed on the Earth. So there's frequency rising, there's solar radiation, uh, galactic radiation, there's changes of the Earth core, there's changes in the plates of the Earth, changes in the atmosphere, there's changes happening in all the planets, there's changes happening. So this basically is caused by what we call uh, stellar which means star, activation, which means things are coming, becoming active, and it's a cycle. There's an alignment. It's a cosmic alignment where many things are lining up to pour forth uh, transformational energies from the core of, of the galaxy right through the sun, right through the earth, into all species on the planet. So th there's an opportunity to receive things. And they say that the peak of this time is 2017. So 2012... Uh, everyone's been talking about was just a Mayan calendar alignment that the Mayan mother matrix had been planted here on the earth to bring in uh, corruptions into the earth to distort uh, cycles of the hologram here to actually shut down uh, normal progressive time cycles and actually to diminish time cycles so that we could actually spin the earth back into a different time frame which would be about 10,000 BC so we're actually, it's called time rip technology. Ripping segments of time and energy out of the matrix of the hologram of this earth to actually spin its time back to a, an alignment where the black hole vortex energy siphoning system was perfectly aligned to rip energy out. So it's like a time rip. So 2012 was, is really a time that's been aligned by intruders to facilitate that time rip, energy extraction, matter-based depletion. And uh, it's been countered by what we call the crystal river flow, the host, the hosting system uh, that is coming in as, as a tri-matrix host, hosting this earth into what we call, uh, it's like a, it's a star surrounding this earth. The star is on another angular rotation of particle spin not observable by our own perception because it's on a different angle of you know rotation but that star is hosting earth it's keeping it in a respirator trying to revive it whilst we're having the time to make evacuation readiness you know to to uh, quicken our own consciousness to come out into the host so we can migrate our consciousness into the host gain all the knowledge that we need through the hosting system and then rise up in a hosting system because the star structure that we came down into manifestation through you know the 12 dimensional step down into density that which we came down through has been robbed and it's been infiltrated by intruders so we cannot ascend through the same passage that we descended into density through we can go up through the host and so the earth is being hosted by a star called Eartha it's an organic 12 dimensional star and it's about to make a star fire, which means it's coming into radiance, entering its 13, 14, 15 dimensional structure. It'll turn back into a star and fire into high dimension. It's leaving here in 2047 to 51. So, you know, we've got to do some things here that's going to migrate our consciousness into other fields of organic evolution. So, yeah, uh, things are happening here. It's like everything here is in a state of decay. The percentage of black hole intrusion has overtaken the perpetual motion life structure of the origination of the planet. 
uh, it's going to fall, it cannot be sustained. The whole Milky Way galaxy is going to fall, cannot be sustained. Certain pockets will rise up and regenerate, but it's going to fall and the percentage quotient is that critical that within the next 200 years, the gates or the vortex energy sets which allow you know, transmutation and flow of life off systems into higher dimensions, they're going to be shut, quarantined. So the teachings coming out right now in this current stellar activation cycle, uh, where people can receive it because the energies are flowing in, the information is coming in the energy. Uh, there's a lot of new age practices that are distorting people from the true knowledge and they're trying to encapsulate people into hibernation zone technologies and things like that. So right now, right here, the help is here uh, through the Guardian Alliance and uh, we can always appeal and ask and help to regenerate our structure to migrate off the planet. Okay, hand over. Come on up there, Fax. So you're basically talking about the, the planet reaching uh, certain frequencies and planetary alignments or whatever to allow the human brain to transcend or ascend right now before it gets too late. Is that what you're saying? In the red down there, he typed, nobody alive today was there then. No human, that is. I guess he's talking about, you know, this has happened before. So, I don't know. Was there somebody, was it, was the stuff passed down? Did, did we learn it again? Or has there always been somebody here since last time? couple of good questions there, uh, Fax. Uh, yeah, I, I do mean that humans here today, as they would allow the technology to come in and they would recode through the host, the host structure, the, the host uh, arrangement, which is here to help us ascend, as we would receive what we call the living memory matrix host transplant of our original codes. We can bring those into our biological computer and we can transmute the drag you down death codes that we have received through teachings and trainings and hybridizations. Yes, we can ascend uh, in this time wave that's coming. Stellar activation cycles right here. And yes, these teachings have been on the planet before. Uh, the last time that they were actually operational was about 208,000 years ago where many ascensions were made off the planet. Uh, it happens every 25,556 year cycles. So there would have been many uh, in between that 2008 BC and now. There would have been quite a few, but they've never been uh, enabled fully because of interference. Many interferences have come here in times when ascension cycle was operational. But now it's got to the stage where the whole Milky Way galaxy has lost its living structure quotient and it's being overtaken by uh, Death Star. Atlantean Merkaba technology, which is, you know, reverse spiral, spiral metatronic coding, Fibonacci series, golden mean, sucking you down the black hole. See, uh, yeah, the, the biological computer, the human brain, and also the human body there, red lightning. The human body is made up of cells, and the cells hold DNA and RNA and many other computations in there. The actual uh, DNA is controlled by something called the epigenetic overlay and scientists have taken one strand of DNA and uh, applied it to an analog kind of supercomputer and they found that DNA can compute much faster than any known uh, supercomputer on the planet so one strand of DNA is a very powerful computer and we've got trillions and trillions of cells in the body which are actually uh, storing archiving records of experiential realities, what's going on around you. Science today knows that every atom is recording its environment, every organism is recording its environment. Humans have been recording environment and even as we've come through various forms of development, uh, the cellular structure has always been recording environment and right down on a microcosmic level, uh, the body is a biological computer and the brain is a part of that and the membranes that encompass all sorts of systems within the body right down to subatomic particles. Subatomic particles have membranes, uh, atoms have membranes, molecules have membranes, 
uh, cells have membranes, organs have membranes, the body has membranes, uh, all the layers of your multidimensional anatomy has membranes, all of the space-time probabilities of the aspects of yourself in space-time have membranes that connect together. Everything has membranes that work together and communicate through electromagnetic frequencies of archiving, of computation, of self-identity. So it's like everything is joined together in little specialized separations that give self-identity and they can be brought together for computation on you know, you know, community levels as well. So uh, yeah, the body is a biological computer. Uh, it's called a body mind and the brain is just a part of that. And of course the mind is outside of the body but also inside the body. So you have auric fields, you have etheric fields, you have many, many different frequencies of auric level that reach right out to the multi-cosmos. So right from the very center of every atom, right to the extensivity of every part of the cosmos, every part of you is connected to everything else through membrane controls and separation, self-identity realities. It's there. We are a massive computation of self-identity and self-initiation. We can actually decide and choose See, it's not like a computer that's run by a basic program. It's adapting and changing and rearranging uh, through, you know, collectors of consciousness that constitute, you know, all of the structure of life. So it's always changing. And our self-identity is held within the computation of recording our environment. And so if our body has recorded everything that's going on through the intrusion, through the invasion, uh, we've got archiving of all of that distress, all of that pain and suffering and disease and death and everything is archived in our body. And so it's constantly projecting and perceiving that reality that we create. See, the, the, the hologram of human existence is the projection and perception of your own awareness. And uh, if you're projecting and perceiving their thoughts, their programming, if you are projecting their programming as your reality, whose mind are you, are you using? You're using someone else's mind as your self-identity. We have a reality within us, which is our true template, that can create authentic reality of self-identity. We're going to decode from the program of the programmers. And we're going to emanate and radiate our true desires and creative abilities. We're going to create the world we truly want to see. And it happens through cleansing the temple, or the body, of all the distortions and the computations that are being programmed in by outside sources. We don't want it. We don't want it. And so we can actually learn how to create our own realities, upgrade our system, and ascend our consciousness into organic structures. We don't have to be contained here in this electromagnetic sphere of control of alien intrusion. So uh, there you go. Hand over there. Fax, hand over. Anybody's trying to say red. I don't understand. I'm about like you understand some, but not all. Uh, is that we're all manifesting what we have around us. And as long as we're under their controls, the manifestation that we're going to live in is exactly what it is right now. And it's controlled by them. Until we decide or learn how to, especially during this. Uh, kind of transformation period with the alignments and the frequencies and all that change in the planet, we have a chance to bring ourselves out of this bondage that they put us in. We're not really going nowhere. Our world will just slowly become different if we manifest it ourselves and get out from behind the control of those who were sucking the life blood out of, out, out of us. I guess I got that right. If not, I, he'll straighten me up. That was very, very well said and very clear facts. Probably, probably, probably clearer than I've said. I, I might use highfalutin words in some ways, but that was very clear. Except there's only one s small change I'll make. It's not like we're going to dissolve this world and we'll still be here in a new world that we create ourselves. In some sense that's true. But what we're actually seeing is that the programs that they've caused us to take on board and project out as the reality that they want us to see, we're going to disconnect from that. And to do that, 
we're going to uh, take on original higher codes of our self-identity and virtually migrate our consciousness into new fields. So as we migrate our self-identity into the host codes, which are hosting us out of this disaster, we're going to let the world that we know now fall down into its own decay because we're not going to support it anymore. We're not going to support that world anymore. And uh, we're going to pro procreate and co-create through our mind, through the new codes, through the um, joining of the support that's given from above, which are really our own original self-identity stations of consciousness, gestalts and families of higher um, creation essence. We're going to create the world that we would have created had we remained on our journey of co-evolution, of evolution of our own self-identity consciousness. And so what it is, is that uh, we're actually migrating our consciousness self-identity into a new reality that we're creating in co-creative abilities with higher race lines, which are actually part of our own identity originally. So we're letting the intruders have their world, their way, and we're actually... Uh, letting them, if they don't want to come into the regenesis, which is always the offer, the offer is always a peaceful covenant of co-evolution of all species. In other words, we're offering those intruders, we're offering them uh, a new covenant of peace whereby they can regenerate. Come with us into higher dimensional structure under the guardianship uh, of a program of regenesis and bring into yourself new codes that you can actually let go all of the dead decaying structure of your own anatomy. So there always is the offering uh, for the intruders to come into Regenesis. And if they can't come in, we are certainly going to be uh, rising up into our own creative abilities and no longer partaking of their corruption. So it'll drop down on its own uh, and come into sort of like what we call space dust return, where those particles of God source consciousness would lose their integrity as a self-identity reality or as an entity, those intruders would lose themselves, you know, making progressively less and less returns of energy within their systems and they would come down into something which they would lose themselves. They wouldn't have that identity. Uh, but those particles would return through creation point door uh, to be reused as structure to create new living systems which would come in and take the place of that decaying system. So part of the technology we're learning is if some entities which are always on the upward, upward spiral of evolution of consciousness, if we could hold a, a memory of those falling ones uh, before they fell, in other words, say for example, we're on a frequency which is very, very uh, medium in ascension and those entities which are now falling uh, were also on that medium plane of ascension with us and we knew them before they fell and uh, we said to them look you know we will remember you well as they went back down to space dust we could actually hold a memory and bring them back into full integration through that memory of energy imprint that we would hold for them and they could reconstitute themselves so that is always one of the options for those who are falling down into that way but in the economy of what we call God source nothing is ever ever lost it's just restructured, it's just reintegrated, but we would rather hold uh, an integrity as an entity and rise up into greater evolutions of consciousness, expansion of self-identity, and uh, rather than fall down. And those who are falling down, there's no real disgrace in it, if you know what I mean. So anyway, I, uh, I hand over now, over to you, Vax. Okay, now I guess there's two questions here. So the first one would be, uh, according to Fibonacci theory, as the uh, vibrational state rises, which it is right now, it's getting way up there. It's been at like 8 hertz or something for 100 years, and now it's like 10, 9 something, and it's steadily climbing. Is this going to move us in, uh, or is this what's going to bring us into closer ascension to line up our DNA so we can 
think this through to move into a, to ascension? That's one question. The, you want me to wait and answer the, ask the second question afterwards? The second question is, when we were uh, flowing through, before we were captured by this low vibrational state and put into this bondage that we're in now, we were, we were already where we're going, is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, I'll answer the second one first. Yes, um, we were already where we were going before we got dragged down to what we're suffering now. Exactly right. Uh, even the biblical expression would say, we've all fallen from the knowledge of the glory of God. In other, in other words, we had a former glory, which was an attainment that we already had in the evolution of consciousness, which was an uplifting progression of creative ability and appreciation of life, and we got dragged down under the influence of the intruders, under the influence of the invaders. So, yes, very, very true. I agree with that point there, facts. That uh, we were well on the way on our return to much, much higher knowledge of life and community and goodness and everything else. Exactly, exactly. Uh, the, first que the first question about the Fibonacci series or whatever, the frequency, the vibration, uh, the raising frequency. Yeah. So the the Earth has a resonant signature, a sound tone, a frequency or a pitch, and they call it the Schumann resonance, and it's measurable, and which they have been measuring, and as you said, it's, it's been rising in recent decades. It's been rising quite, you know, excessively. But one one point I want to make is that when we use the word vibration. Uh, through the teachings we're learning now, vibration is higher, say in the nucleus of an atom or something like that, vibration is higher when it's denser. So uh, vibration represents potential. Potential energy is held within high vibration. Now, a lot of the common thought on this has been as we're raising the vibration, you know, we're ascending in, in frequency or whatever. But what, what we've been studying is the ratio between vibration and oscillation. So vibration will be sound, fusion, compaction, contraction, potential, energy held at a core. There will be vibration, very high vibration. It's been reduced right down into a molecular compaction, say for example, in our body. We have high potential. It's, it's a vibration. It's a high vibration. And we've got a very low oscillation. In other words, the light emission, the energy release is not high. So overall, if you took vibration and oscillation at a density, you would see that you have uh, a low frequency, a low frequency of events. But if you were to raise frequency, frequency would be the release of potential, the release of vibration, changing the ratio of oscillation and vibration to a higher dimensional density band or harmonic. So when you, when you see density, it's high vibration. When you see ascension, it's actually release of vibration. So you're getting a slower vibration but a higher oscillation. The ratio between those two fission and fusion generator cells changes into a uh, bass pulse rhythm of a higher frequency. So uh, it seems a bit strange to talk that way, but I've got all the notes and details on it. I can give you much higher descriptions on it if I was to have a look at the notes. Basically, uh, when you come into contraction, into compaction, into density, there's a much higher potential for release of energy. So as you rise up into another harmonic of less density, there's a lower vibration, higher oscillation, more expansion of electric, less magnetic. It's becoming a different kind of an expression, and there's still a, a blending of unity between those two. There's a ratio that would hold them together as um, something that works together. Vibration and oscillation, fission and fusion, uh, expansion and contraction are working together in different ra ratios according to density. Uh, very interesting stuff, you know. Anyway, hand over there for that one, uh, Fax. Come on, up. <laughs> the 
we got red all confused. But I, I've read I've read quite a bit about it. But what the, what I was led to believe in my reading was the slower the vibration, the slower that the atoms and molecules and all that slows down, that it becomes like a table that you're looking at. You know, it's still you know atoms are 90 percent empty space. So the lower the vibration, the more solid it gets. I was thinking that the higher the vibration, the more we could get out of this uh, place that we're stuck in. I, I don't know, I can't say it as good as you can, but yeah, you'll have to go over that part and next time I see you, bring you in the room and we'll go over that. But I, that's the way I understood it. The lower the vib vibration in the atoms and everything that, that it's made out of, the lower the vibration, it becomes a, a matter, a solid matter that we perceive as a solid matter. We can't put our hand through it no no longer because it's, it's such a low vibrational state. But once we get to a higher vibrational state, the oscillation I haven't thought about. Hey, the base pulse frequency. Eric, come on and talk. Yeah, and I attempt to slow it down just to hire for a few, for two or three minutes. Let me play us a song that might be relative. And uh, I'm not the moderator, and Fax is, so it's up to you, Fax. May I play the song? Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you. 